Hey folks, Asia the CEO here, and in this video, we're gonna attempt to do something that hopefully is not dangerous, so let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member to help support this channel. Links are below. So um, if you've looked at any of my videos before um, and what we're doing at the media booth, I have added some TP Link smart switches, smart plugs, and everything like that to mainly put on kind of a sweep to turn off everything if anything was left on by mistake, but also give the ability to turn everything on. And as more devices come on and the more complexity happens at our media booth, I wanna make it easier and easier to turn everything on instead of having people have to turn every single thing on and then which leads to people forgetting stuff. So originally I had a smart switch that you can mount on the wall to TP-Link sales. And also, this is not sponsored by TP-Link. <laughs> I wish they would, but it's not sponsored. This is me just telling you what I'm using because um, I use it personally here as well. Um, but anyway, it was a smart plug that you can plug just like another out um, light switch, but it was smart. So you can turn it on remotely and then they had functionality inside the, pro um, the program that the management, the CASA smart application or whatever it's called, um, to where when you hit that switch, it doesn't necessarily just turn the lights on, it can turn on and be linked to any other smart device or a group of devices. So what I wanted to do is I grouped all of our video equipment for live streaming and everything like that upstairs in the media booth, I linked it to that switch. But the problem was every time you hit the switch, the lights go on, Normally we keep the lights off when we're in service. So if you hit the switch, it turned everything off and there was no granularity in that switch uh, or anything like that. So anyway, long story short, I saw YouTube and I'll link a video here to where a guy, um, you made a portable outlet, put an outlet and um, a switch inside of a two gang box and hooked up an extension cord to it to give whatever outlet, whatever power tool I think he was using an on and off switch. So it made me think, I reached out to him, sent him a message saying, hey, will this work even if I'm not using an outlet and I'm just plugging a switch that's smart that needs power? He said, it, in theory, it should work. So that's what we're gonna try. We're going to take that smart switch off the wall and put it inside of a box that's on top of, or maybe inside of the uh, AV rack to where it's a switch that will turn everything on and it's smart as well. So it could go over a um, the app on a scheduled time to turn everything on and off if it was left on, all that other stuff like that. So let's cut over to the overhead camera so I can show you what I'm doing. And please, before I even get started, I am not a trained electrician. This is meant for entertainment purposes only. Um, please consult, if you're not confident with doing anything like this, um, please consult a licensed electrician. I know enough not to get myself in trouble and not to fry myself. Um, but again, I wanna let you know, I'm not an electrician, so please don't try and say, AJ did it and he said I could and now I can't feel my left arm. Not that, that's your own fault, all right? So anyway, let's cut over to the camera here. All right, so what do we got? Well, we have the original TP link switch, which I don't know how somebody has this on here. Anyway, we got this and it's gonna pull from power here. We got our two hot, we have our neutral and we have our ground. That's one thing. And what they used is they used a kind of like, I'm using a single gang box to place this inside of here. Now, the one thing I got with this is I wanted to make sure that there was a grounding screw inside of this. And by reading it, when I picked it up, it had one because we want this to be grounded. And there we go. All right, right there, so we're good. And we're gonna seal up two of these. We're gonna have the cable coming out in one direction. 
we're gonna seal both of these so there's not a problem. So that's what this is. And we have little other mounts that we could hook on here and screw into the table or something like that if we wanted to have it stable so it doesn't go anywhere. All right, the other thing we have is a replacement power cable. So based off of his video, we're gonna strip some of this wire back so I can have some extra. But technically what we're gonna be doing is connecting these together, ground to ground and ground to the ground screw, hot, hot, all this other good stuff. And I believe we don't need to run um, both of these here, but we'll test that out. And then neutral to neutral, something like that. All right, so like I said, Again, another warning. I am not telling y'all, I am not an electrician and all this other stuff. And I'm only doing this only because I'm in full responsibility. I am here. I am testing this out with my stuff. So literally the only thing we need to do is make sure that this gets power and it shows up on the network. That's it. All right. So also we got some wire nuts and some other stuff like that. And I had bought these to kind of, um, to cinch the wire in place. I believe that these will fit. Um, I just couldn't test to make sure it fits here. I hope it does, because if I don't, then I have to go back and buy something else. And yay, it fits, cool. So we're gonna run the cable through here and cinch it down. So it can't go anywhere. All right, so I think I got everything that I need here. So first, let's go ahead and seal all these things up here. All right, that's one. All right, and that's two. All right, so we're going to put this on this end here. Gonna run the rest of the cable in here and then tighten this down so it does not go anywhere. All right. And I'm gonna need to put something else in here to cinch this down a little bit more all right so let's go ahead and put these here and i do have some electrical tape all right one down i need to get some other cable which is most likely in the car for some more grounding cable so i can connect it to here and then run a another third wire into this and clamp those together now, I do not believe I need to connect both of these. So I am going to tape off one of these for right now, because normally the other one would go to your light or whatever you're trying to control, and I don't need that. So we're gonna tape off one of these, and I think I have a extra wire nut here. So that would be up and out of the way. So now technically I just need a, another wire to do for my ground to run it to here. And I need to find, I know I got another wire around here somewhere, actually to gauge a wire for this too. So let me find that. All righty, now let's seal this up here. Alrighty, here is the test. We just want to see, do we get power? And yeah, <laughs> a little nervous to be quite honest. Boom, now you probably can't see it. Let me turn this light off. We have power. So now I need to, 
I'm using the temporary ground right now, but we have this. I need to now connect this to, to see, does it show up on the Wi-Fi? So what I'm gonna do is pull the app here and try to go through the app and I'm gonna reset it so that I can actually um, get it on the network here. All right, so I'm gonna bring up the app here on the screen here. And what we're gonna do is originally, this was it, the media booth lights, but we are since going to remove this. Yes, remove from the list, remove. And we're gonna add a new one here. And we're gonna add a device. And I'm probably gonna need to do this again on the church's account since I'm doing it this way. But here's the device. Yes, I've installed it. Yes, it's the color. Let's try it again. And of course the train would go by right when I'm doing this. All right, so as you can see, we connected to it. So obviously it is working. I'm gonna put it on my stuff right now. And I just wanna confirm that it's working. All right, it has a connection here. So now let me actually go to my UDM Pro. Let me log into that and let's confirm that everything is good. And there it is. I see it on here, it's on the Wi-Fi. So now all I gotta do is inside the software, link it to the controller of doing everything. And I think we're good. So I think that was kind of easy. Um, one thing I do need to do, like I said, I need to get another, uh, a longer grounding cable to get this up out of the way. Um, I need to get a crimp on here for the wire so it doesn't go anywhere, but I think we're good. So let me go ahead and reset this again because I need to set this up again at the church, but Cool, so let's go ahead, pick up the stuff I need, head down to the church, resync it there, and then we'll call this video done. All right, we're here at the church. I got it plugged in right now. As you can see, we are getting power. I need to reset it and put it on the Wi-Fi here instead of the one it was a, when I tested it. So we hit this button to reset it, all right? And then I need to place it on the app on the phone, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so everything is there. Now let's go over here, and we need to turn, make a group of everything. So I had media booth here, but let's make sure what's in here. So we wanna turn on our, all of our converters, our Behringer, converters, converters, Hyperdeck, the switcher, the SDI to HDMI, as well as our up down cross converter. All right, so that's everything. All right, so that's media booth. Now, what we want to do is make a task to where when we hit this switch, it turns on everything. So that's the name. The trigger device is the video system. And then there's the media booth. That's what needs to happen when we turn everything on and off. That is the switch. And uh, we'll just say video. Video gear. All right. So now, we have it live now. All right, so everything is off. I wanna see how far I can get this so that I can see everything is on. All right, so when we hit this, this should turn on, everything here below should turn on. 
so let me see if I can keep the camera up while I hit the switch here. Ha <laughs> ha! Boom, everything was turned on. And then if we hit this again, everything is off. Awesome. So this works. The idea now is maybe put that switch inside of here and that will make it easy enough for everybody to get access to. All right, as you can see, I have everything off here. Nothing is on. I have OBS open, which pulls from here. Got our plug over there. We have our back camera on and our multi-view monitor on that's pulling from the ATEM, which is also off. All right, so let's go ahead and just hit, and obviously there's no one else up here with me. Look behind all this stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and hit this. Everything turned on, and there, boom. It turns our converters on for the cameras, turns on the multi-view, well actually it turns on the ATEM, which is to the multi-view. So all that is turned on, just from that simple little button. So if we hit this again, everything is now turned off. Cool. All right, so I would say that that was a success. So thank you. Um, and I don't remember his name, but I'm going to post a link to his channel where he did something similar and he answered back to me about this. And it looks like this worked. So we're good to go. Um, I don't think there's nothing else. I'll have a link in the description to all the parts that I used and everything I did to get this up and running. And that's about it. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate it. Like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And I want to thank the patrons who made this video possible. Their names on the screen right now. And you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Or you can become a member here on YouTube by clicking the join button below. And you get different perks for that given platform and it doesn't matter which one you do i appreciate whichever one you do because whether it be patreon or youtube you are helping us train media ministries all over the world thanks for watching folks this is aj and we will see you on the next video later